Assalamu alaikum viewers, this is Safraz Karni from Pehrami Haq. Once again, we are joined by Dr. Umar from Canada. Assalamu alaikum, doctor. How are you? Assalamu alaikum, Safraz. Pleasure to be here again. Okay. Yeah, today we have chose very important topic about uh, the concept in Quran. We say, obey Allah and obey the messenger. You know, which is a very important verses in Quran. Ati Allah, Ati Rasul. I want you to please share your research with our viewers about that the concept they have in Quran. Go ahead. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Thank you, Brother Surfraz. Once again, this is uh, an extremely important uh, subject, extremely important concept that uh, is the key to unraveling the uh, a lot of myths about uh, uh, our religion. And uh, uh, it's unfortunate that not paying attention to the precision of Allah's words have led us to have led many of us had led many Muslims to to significant confusion regarding understanding key verses in the Mus'haf. And uh, um, I, I would say a few things, if I may, at the very beginning, is that. Sure. Uh, uh, words not, we, we talked about in the past that uh, the Mus'haf words, the Quran words, uh, are typically plucked out of their context. So the words are important, the context is very important, the chapter is also very important. So the, the, the concept of the context is, is something which is not a linguistic concept per se, but a natural concept. In other words, if I were to pluck, if I were to pluck a, 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 a leaf from a tree, and I tell you, here's a leaf. So, you know, I, I plucked it out of its context, out of its natural context. Aside from the leaf doesn't make any sense by itself, aside from the fact that it will die soon, it doesn't make any sense if it's taken out of the tree from which it belongs. Of course, I can move on and give you more examples. I mean, if you, if you take a, a bucket of water and uh, this bucket of water came from a river, <laughs> again, the same analogy. You know, if you take the eye of a fish, just take it out and I present it to you and you look at it and you say, what is this? I tell you, this is the eye of a complex system called the fish, right? Right. So, so the Quran, the Quran is a natural creation. It's Allah's creation. It's not a man-made creation. Okay, and we have to look at it as a whole. You know, as as an in, integral system. So, having said that, I I like to say that uh, that's that's important to to start with. Uh, that, that paves the way for the importance of paying attention to the words. Number one and not to confuse words by other words, not to lump words as, as having all a single meaning, and not to use words interchangeably. This is one of the biggest disasters when we look at the Mus'haf, aka the Quran, is that we, we assume that different words have the, the same meaning. You see, different words have if something is different from something else, it means that there's a difference between them. Right. Simple. Okay. There are different letters that compose one word. There's different letters that compose the second word. So they're completely different. Okay. Now, diff so different words imply different concepts. Okay. Different concepts. This is very important. One word, one word, may imply different concepts as well. Okay, now, I, and, and now, okay, now we were told since our beginning that Islam is a religion of fitrah. Okay, everybody is, 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 is happy to repeat that, many Muslims. But, and by fitrah, I would say primitiveness or human natural disposition or something similar. However, later on, we realized as we grow older and more sophisticated that it is inconceivable for all regulations and control measures that we experience as Muslims. For instance, siyam, fasting, 
to be part of our natural fitrah, our natural primitiveness. It's just, it's not, you know, fasting is not part of fitrah. That's why you don't find animals fasting, okay? So right. the problem does not lie here with the the uh, with the natu- uh, the problem does not lie with the divine revelation i.e the mushaf and its assertion about fitra what it said about fitra but rather in the parallel religion that was already in the making few years after the death of the prophet okay uh this parallel religion had to be invented in the same manner parallel religions were invented to compete with the original judaism and christianity all right so the foundation of this new religion had to be sufficiently substantive to compete with the divine revelation okay if you want to create a new religion a parallel religion it has to be substantive okay to compete with the original religion all right so the center of the new religion had to be the center of this in, in new religion had to be something substantial and that's where the centrality of the messenger of muhammad came into being okay muhammad is a messenger but a new religion was built around the character of muhammad okay and this and for, for many people it's easier for many people to comprehend uh, a, a theater, a, a, a play, a, a, a vision, uh, you can convince me with a photo rather than with a concept. You know, people are prone to accept a story. Okay. Right. So a new religion was built around the character of the Prophet Muhammad. Okay. And so it was, notice the parallels with what happened in Christianity. In Christianity, the religion was shifted to be built around the character of Jesus. Jesus became the religion, devotion right. to him, following him, loving him, believing in him as a God. The Muslims did something very, very similar to, to your surprise. Very, very, not to your surprise, but to many people's surprise. Did something very similar. So the, 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 the religion the center of the religion, the new religion, the center of the new religion became the prophet or the messenger. Okay. Now to to now why why is that dangerous? Because that started all kind of loopholes. You know, if 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 you want to if you want to insert a new doctrine and Allah said I protect this divine revelation. I revealed it, I protect it. So when Allah said that I mean, he's serious. He's very serious with us. He's not a joker. So if, if we if we take that, if we you see, if if we believe in that seriously, if we believe in that seriously, then we have to look at the core of the new religion. That the core of the new religion, when it was built around the the character of the prophet, you can insert things in the new religion easily you see allah says that the divine revelation is protected mahfud but the new religion is not mahfud that the, the right. religion is not mahfud. you can insert things there's so many loopholes that you can use to insert things to create a new religion that you can, I would say, customize it as you wish. You can customize it as as you like. You can, you can justify. You can justify being so kind to a cat, okay. At the same time, in the same the same the same religion, and you the same that you can justify having a coup, a violent coup. I mean, that's shocking. You know, you can justify a violent coup. In, look, look at these contradictions. In other words, you can kill and create mayhem. Okay? And that the new religion. Now, how to support that? The, to support that had to go to the verses in the Quran and interpret them to suit this purpose. Now, whether this was done mischievously or innocently, I don't know, you know, I don't know, and I should not know, and I will not know. 
But what we want to do is to deal with reality. To deal with reality is that the majority of Muslims, unfortunately, follow the clergy, the guardians of the new religion, right. the, 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 the gatekeepers of the parallel religion, which is based on the centrality of the Prophet Muhammad, based on his the centrality, his centrality in the new religion and whatever comes from him, okay, as a second revelation, is as a divine revelation. Okay, so it was it was full fabricated. This this new structure took centuries to perfect in a, in, a, in a negative way to perfect, but took centuries to evolve to the way it is right now. Okay, the way it is right now, and and one of the pillars of this um, of to to, to to create credence and strong support for this parallel, for the core of this parallel region is one, is that the prophet is infallible. Okay, the, the, yeah. sorry, the, the, yeah, the prophet, and I will I will talk about the differences here. The prophet, the infallibility of Muhammad, the infallibility of Muhammad. I'll just say that I won't say the prophet or the messenger. Second is that uh, we uh, that the pro uh, Muhammad uh, whatever he uttered was a wahi was a divine revelation. Right. And three that we need to obey him. Him. I will get to the details later. And four we need to follow him, obey him, follow him. What he said was wahi revelation. Uh, fourth. Or fifth, we he is the proper example for us. Okay, yes. Uswat and Hasana. Yes. Right. Uh, and and uh, and uh, so these are the main things. Once once you know these are inculcated in the mind on the, of the average Muslim, then definitely because it is easier for the average Muslim to to look at how the prophet lived and what he said and the assumption that what he said and how he lived was transmitted to us correctly on that assumption which is a huge if huge assumption okay on the basis of that assumption okay then it is easier it's easier to emulate that lifestyle okay and to be content that you followed the religion, <laughs> it's, right. it's it's a, you know it's fantastic. That's one thing. The second, of course, the fact that you have so many contradictions in this parallel religion, so many contradictions that you can create a religion to suit any any need, whether whether you're advocating sheer violence or you're advocating seclusion. And, and occultation from society by going to a mountain and, and seclude yourself. It has everything in it, okay? All right, okay. So, mm -hmm. so the question is, was Muhammad infallible or not, okay? Now, infallibility is from Isma, okay? Um, so the belief that the Prophet was perfect, okay, which was made out of this parallel religion led to the believing of of in his infallibility or who knows it could have been vice versa i don't know you know believing that he was perfect led to infallibility or his inf or believing in his, his infallibility led to that he is perfect this belief espoused by the majority of muslims sharply contradicts the mushaf uh, the, uh, uh, and the muhammad of the mushaf who is portrayed as a human who on occasions had erred in judgment uh, or performed acts that were corrected by divine intervention. Right. Okay. Now, uh, you know, it, it, for, for those who may not be comfortable with these ideas, I want to state up front that my reference is the Mus'haf. I mean, I, I'm not going to use any other reference in my presentation, in my talk today. That That's it, the Mus'haf. Okay. So I attributed everything, I validate everything by going back to the Mus'haf, nothing else. 
All right, so the Mus'haf emphasized that Muhammad did not possess any divine attributes at all. He didn't. The message, after all, was not Muhammad. The message wasn't Muhammad. The message and its messenger were both infallible. Again, the message and the message and the messenger were infallible, both infallible, not Muhammad the man. Huge difference. Huge difference, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, not Muhammad the man, not Muhammad the father, not Muhammad the husband, not Muhammad the governor. Okay? Right. So, okay. So, now, coming uh, uh, claiming that Muhammad had the capacity or was given the, uh, the privilege of making eternal injunctions, i.e. tahrim, okay, uh, uh, including rulings on what is, which is rulings on what permissible or forbidden, could all could could technically be considered as shirk. You know, I, I'm very cautious because I don't like to pass these, you know, big claims. Maybe others are more comfortable, but technically could be labeled as shirk. Okay, because Allah said there should no one should be associated with his hukum. Right. Clearly, you see. And that's why, again, our reference is the Quran. Allah says in 1826, 1826, No one can be partner in Allah's hukum, in Allah's judgment. Right. So the Prophet is not, cannot be sharing Allah's hukum. Okay. So evaluating Muhammad to a holy status could also suggest that Muslims were competing with the status of of, of uh, or image of Jesus among the most Christians. And, and I would say that the underlying narrative of such competition is as follows. This is the underlying narrative. If Muhammad was proven to possess divine powers, he would have been superior to Jesus and therefore the superiority of Islam. See, th there was a competition. <laughs> right. if, 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 if Jesus had miracles and he did this and that, well, our prophet can do this and that, and hence he is, you know, more superior. Okay. Uh, and, um, okay. So, and, and Muslims culture is full of, of all kind of crazy ahadith that brazenly, brazenly, in a very brazen way, contradict the Quran in a brazen way. For instance, I, I can't help it but mention the hadith that uh, says um, the prophet made the water spring out of his hands or between the water came, you know, created the spring from his hands. And Allah says clearly in the Quran, they asked you to, to bring the water, to make the water spring from your hands and say to them, I'm just a basher. Look yeah. at the contradiction. <laughs> and those framers of such vulgar, brazen hadith were so naive and were so distanced from the Mus'haf that they did not see that this is a major contradiction to a verse in the Quran. All right. So, so the, the concept of Ismat infallibility has never been precisely defined, by the way, to surprise, maybe you're surprised by this. It is typically understood to mean protection from errors and sins. That's the customary traditional right. understanding mm -hmm. in the sense that an infallible person does not commit errors or sins. The vast majority of Sunnis and practically, by the way, all Shias believe that the Prophet possessed Ismat, Ismat infallibility a privilege given to him, so they believe, by Allah. In fact, Shia go further to claim that the Imams have Ismat, but the Sunnis should not be too delighted and think that they're better because <laughs> they give Ismat, a de facto Ismat, to many Sahaba. I can prove that if the time allows later on, but let's not deviate from the subject. Okay, so now Isma, Isma is derived from Asama, 
an Arabic root word to that mean to protect. Okay, let's look at 567, verse Surah 5, mm -hmm. ja, uh, verse 67. Uh, it, it, it highlights the protection that the messenger was granted. This exactly goes to the protection that the messenger was granted. Allah says, Ya ayyuha rasul, ballig ma unzil ilayka min rabbik, wa in lam tafal fama ballakta risalatahu, wallahu yasimuka min al nas. In Allah la yahdil qawm al kafirin. A very minimalist translation. O oh, you messenger, convey what was revealed to you from your Lord, and if you did not, then you would not have delivered his message, and Allah ya'simuka from mankind. Let's just leave it like that. Ya'simuka from mankind. Allah does not guide the nation that conceals the truth. So how do we understand ya'simuka? Okay, ya'simuka, because the Quran should help us by itself, in itself, Within it, it contains the solution to this riddle. Okay, Yasimka is used here to reference, uh, uh, first of all, is, is it's in reference to mankind. If one were to consider the context of the other 12 occurrences, there are other 12 occurrences in the Mus'haf, and I will not mention all of them. One can go to any database. Yeah, uh, the derivatives of Asama and, and all derivatives, the other derivatives rather, are related to the act of protection, nothing else, okay? Nothing else. So, so here, very clearly, that the, the concept of Isma, as it appeared in the Quran, it refers to protection from people. It does not mean protection, it does not say it, actually, that Allah is protecting him from committing an error or a sin. Now, protecting who? Protecting who? Okay, Allah says, Ya ayyuhar rasul. Ya ayyuhar rasul. Allah is addressing a rasul, and we'll come to that significant uh, uh, point in a second. Ya ayyuhar rasul. When Allah says, Ya ayyuhar nabi, he does not mean Ya ayyuhar rasul. When he says, Ya ayyuhar rasul, he does not mean Ya ayyuhar nabi. Right. You see, this is something that many Muslims are struggling to, to understand. Struggling to understand. And why? Because I think that uh, because we, we, we have we have evolved, the Muslim mind has evolved to to accept contradictions, to to frown at precision. Anything right. that is precise, we frown on it. Okay, uh, 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 contradictions is acceptable because we always finish our narrative with the very mischievously used but correct phrase. Wallahu a'lam. Okay? I think it's sinisterly used, but it's correct for it. Now, Allah says in 33.1, in Surah 33, verse 1, Ya ayyuhan nabi, ittaqillah, wa la tuta'al kafirin, wal munafiqin, inna Allah kana aliman hakeema. O you prophet, not O you messenger, O you prophet, have awareness and cognizance, and this is my loose translation, mm. of Allah, and do not obey the truth concealers, i.e., what is the kafirin, truth concealers, and hypocrites, al munafiqin. Allah was alimun hakim. I'll just leave alim hakim untranslated. Our concern is that in this verse, if the prophet, if the prophet was, if he was infallible, then there could be no need for Allah's warning, right? Right. If he was infallible, he, he, he does not need to warn him. So this warning to the prophet, look, to the prophet, it is because he either, he either obeyed the truth concealers, al-kafirin, wal-munafiqin, or he may obey them, right? It's one of these right. two. Mm -hmm. He either obeyed them or he may obey them. So Allah is warning him, okay? If he was infallible, Allah would not need to do that warning at all. All right. Allah says in 66.1, and th this is an important preliminary, and we will not take much time about the infallibility, but it's really critical. Okay. 66.1, mm -hmm. Surah 66, verse 1. Ya ayyuhan nabi, lima tuharrima ahalla Allahu lak. Okay. 
just the first phrase is enough to convey our point here. O Prophet, why do you eternally prohibit, i.e. make haram, what Allah has made eternally lawful for you? Right. Notice that it is he's addressing what? The Prophet. He's not addressing the Messenger. A huge, huge difference. That's a, a very, difference. yeah, very good point, right? Okay. So now, now many Muslims overlook the implications of the above two verses that I just said for reason that I really don't know why. Not clear to me. Allah chose to archive specific prophetic experiences. Notice certain prophetic experiences, not certain experiences of the messenger no of the prophet okay and he chose to archive them and 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 uh, 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 when allah says lima to harim why do you make haram you know i mean look at the tafasir people are interested in what in the world did he make haram right okay the question is the prophet did something which the pro allah came well, and, did something right mm -hmm. and and corrected i i wouldn't say you know some some people say reprimanded the prophet. Fine, you can use whatever word you want, but he corrected and warned the prophet right. that you are about to declare something haram. Right. Okay, so the human reality of, of Muhammad, the prophet, did not, I think, accord well with those who elevated him to a superhuman status. You right. know, uh, and this elevation could have been the result, by, I, I have to be frank with you, could have been the result of extreme love and admiration for the Prophet, yes. or uh, for aspiration for a high level of piety, or some sinister objective. I can't. I, this is not our business. Yeah, we don't our know. business is to understand our text, because we are living today, we need to right. understand our text. So, all right. So, uh the, this is enough this is just to show the first pillar of infallibility the messenger will be protected the messenger will be protected i.e the one who delivers the message allah says i will protect you from humankind min al nas right okay? i will protect you so this concept of infallibility is null and void is completely null and void. There's no substance, there's no validation, there are no roots to it in the divine revelation. Okay, now. I just have a question because I'm yeah. maybe we want to cover that. You know, you're talking about the prophet. Yeah. And obviously you have shared this uh, verse, 66.1, uh, where it seems like God is trying to correct something, you know, trying to correct the prophet. So one question always comes, you know, the people ask, uh, like, you know, what is the what is the significance? Like, why we have to have prophet to understand something like in Quran? Why God has sent all those prophets? What you know? What are their roles besides just uh, sending the message of Allah? Is they have any other role? I mean, you can probably elaborate on that. Did they have any other duties to perform or just or they were chosen to be a prophet? Sure. You know, if if you don't mind, I I I like look at two aspects of your question. One is extremely both are important, but the first is very profound. Is why Allah chose, you know, to send prophets. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. And the second one what is the role of the of the messenger just to deliver a message so right. if you don't mind i can address the second now sure, go ahead. and the first because the the second the first aspect the first part of your question is really profound and we can talk about it please if you don't mind at the end sure sure because that's that's that that kind of gives a, a broader perspective rather than details sure. the detail that uh so the, the, the first thing is that, and I heard it, frankly, a lot, was the messenger just a postman. <laughs> right, right. That's what, you know, a lot of people say, you know, if, I mean, it seems like he's just uh, delivering the message. There's no... Right. And the other ads we're going to discuss. Uh, yes. Have you ever ordered any valuable books from uh, Amazon? 
brother, server. I'm just asking you. Have you yeah. ever ordered yeah. any? Yeah. Aside from my book. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Have you ever uh, ordered yes. valuable things for your loved ones, for your wife? Or... Yes, we did. Yes. Okay. Uh, and the things that you ordered could have been uh, literature, valuable pieces of knowledge, like yes. books, or right. they could have been uh, they could have been valuable things, like a thousand dollar worth of some oriental carpet or something, right? Right. That's true. And which which I did in the past because I collect Oriental carpets and uh, so do, don't you want a trustworthy postman? Yes. You you want a very trustworthy postman who does not take the book that you ordered and insert pages, you know, to confuse you. You want a very honest, trustworthy postman who does not poke into that's, what... that's a very good point uh dr omar that's a very good point very yeah good point there. so so the 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 postmen or the postwomen are vetted vetted i never heard we, we never hear of a postman stealing material or or running away with a valuable thing so so the value of the postman or the postwoman is is very high to us it's it's actually after the lockdown this is what's making commerce yeah, you know when you talk about impractically you know they check their backgrounds they have to be very they check their security clearance and all so, that so or, exactly yeah. so they have to be and this is one example they have to be people of good character right right so true. okay so let's not underestimate the importance of that "Quote unquote postman argument." Right. Now, now, if we want to use, if, if we want to appeal to emotionalism, to the accumulation, centuries accumulation of of emotionalism, where we enter a masjid and we see two writings side by side with the same size, Allah Muhammad. You know, that has affected our brain. We enter the masjid, whether you enter the most famous masjid in the world, yes. you see the writings of Allah and Muhammad, you know, in my opinion, brazenly, in, in such a, 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 a repulsive way, the same size. They, they won't even put Muhammad a smaller size, at least. Yes, we, we talk about this with the other uh, guests, our, our other guests, and this is a really serious issue. Is I mean, it so? So, so the accumulation, the accumulation of, of the visual art, yes. number one, yes. the accumulation of the visual, of the narratives, uh, you know, from the Indo-Pakistani subcontinent to this Naat, they call it Sahifat al-Burda, which right. is very famous. Right. Muhammadun Sayyid al-Kawnayni wa thaqalain Can you believe it? Just think about it. Muhammad is the master of Sayyid al the two universes? Yes. So, it's unbelievable. 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 So, so the question is, what is our reference? If we go back, if we go back to our reference, which is the Mus'haf, okay, and we look at Balagh, just yeah. the word Balagh, or Balagh, uh, what is Allah saying? وَمَا عَلَيْكَ وَمَا عَلَى الرَّسُولِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغِ الْمُبِينَ sixteen thirty five. 1682 only only your job is to express what i have sent to you okay uh, it appears i think in a total of uh, uh, 2918 2918 he needs to expose what i have sent what he had been entrusted with that's it so i think that many unfortunately are not used to this you know many because as i said the accumulation of the elevation of the status 
right. the other part of your question, we will defer to it later. Now, I want to talk about the, the concept of obedience because this is very important. The Mus'haf contains 23 verses, okay, that demand obedience to the messenger, not to the prophet, not to the prophet. And I can list them. There are 23 verses, okay? The Arabic word for obedience is ta. Okay. In all these verses, the imperative mood of obedience to the messenger was associated in more than one way with Allah's obedience. By the way, the Mus'haf does not have obedience to Allah alone. Never did Allah say, obey me alone. Obey me and the messenger or obey me and obey the messenger. And interestingly, the obedience came also, um, this is something that I found it to be never, you know, uh, re just researched it recently. The same imperative mood of Ta'a appeared in eight verses, all in Surah 26, uh, Surah 26, related not to Muhammad, the messenger, but to the messengers, Nuh, Hud, Salih, Lut, and Shu'ib. So when the ta'a, when, the, when, when these prophets slash messengers were mentioned in the Mus'haf, they were associated, the ta'a to them was associated with their role as messengers. Okay. Not as prophets. Prophet. Okay. So this is, I think this is something that, that should not be overlooked. Okay, so two important conclusions we can draw from the examination of the verses that I just said. The, verse, the first one is that uh, one command of obedience is related to Muhammad, the messenger, okay? Uh, uh, and one, sorry, one more time. One command to the messenger and one command, one ta'a to the messenger, one ta'a to Allah, and one time, one ta'a, the messenger and Allah were associated with it, which means that it's the same. The first case, it means that there are two different ta'as. And this is the important thing, is that Allah never said, obey the prophet. Okay. Now, some people... Uh, uh, okay, so this is a very important point. Yeah. Uh, you're so, saying there's, there's all the verses when you see in Quran, you say obey the messenger. It doesn't say obey the prophet. Is that correct? Never, never Allah said obey the prophet because otherwise the prophet can err. Right. Ya ayyuhan nabi lima tuharrim ma haram Allah ma hal Allah lak. Look, there are several verses in the Mus'haf where the Allah reprimands or corrects or warns the prophet but that, that messenger because it will be a contradiction. How could Allah correct the messenger but it's allah's message <laughs> this very, is very good very good point right okay. yes point. so so now it's a very interesting by the way if someone uh, it's, a, it's a side point but it's a critical point just in case someone said why there are two thoughts right. my preliminary understanding of this is that there are verses in the mushaf where allah declares to Muhammad the messenger to say something to the mu'mineen. Mm. Okay? For instance, Ya Ayyuhan Nabi, I don't remember the, the number of the verse, but this is a very famous one. Ya Ayyuhan Nabi, قُلْ لِي أَزْوَاجِكَ وَبَنَاتِكَ وَنِسَاءِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يُدْنِينَ عَلَيْهِنَّ مِنْ جَلَابِبِهِنَّ ذَلِكَ أَدْنَى أَنْ يُعْرَفْنَا This is the verse that many people claim to support the hijab, okay? I think, I, I don't believe in that, but that's a different story. But anyways, this verse, this itself, this verse, Allah did not say, oh, mu'mineen, oh, nisa al mu'mineen, you have to do A, B, C, D. He said, ayyuhan nabi, sorry, ayyuhan nabi, say or declare to your wives, and the woman of the mu'mineen to do A, B, C, D. Big difference. 
big difference. Mm -hmm. Another example, because this tells us th this this verse is it's, it's in my opinion it's temporal. It has a temporal relevance. Now, is this is this true? I mean, can there be re uh, verses in the Quran with temporal relevance? Of course, there are very easily. Very, there, there are quite a few. Uh, just to give you an example, and no one can deny this. Fifty-nine, seven. Fifty-nine, seven. Okay. Uh, this is. Uh, I, I will I will lose the translation, it, give it a quick loose translation, but get to the point. Allah is talking about the war bounty, and then he says what the prophet has given, what, sorry, what the messenger has given you, take it. And what he kept away from you, then stay away from it. You see, this doesn't apply to me right now, does it? It doesn't. Right. Where is the war? I mean, it, it doesn't affect me. The prophet is not in a war. I'm not with him in a war. It doesn't affect me. This is an archival material. Okay. This is an archival material. And here, here, the, 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 Allah wa atir Rasul is highly applicable because there is a ta'at al Rasul. You right. see? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, otherwise Allah would have, Allah would have made that eternal declaration. So, in my thinking, eternal declaration, eternal uh, uh, eternal commands don't have ta'at al-rasul separate from ta'at Allah. Right. Do not. Okay. All right. So, uh, so based on the verses that involve the word ta'at, its derivative so far, obedience was related to the messenger. Okay. This strongly suggests that most likely uh, uh, affirms that obedience to Muhammad was exclusively related to his capacity as a messenger. Now, here's an example. I work at the university and I'm a professor and I tell, I have a graduate student who's joining my research group. And I tell him at the beginning, part of your duties is to obey the professor. Okay, so when I give him a research paper to read, he should read it. If I were to tell him, go get me coffee or get the grocery for my home, but he said, but this is not part of my relationship with you as a professor. Very good point. You see, mm -hmm. so this shows us Allah is very, very precise. Allah is not mincing words. When he said, Atir al Rasul, it means that we obey him in the message. That's it. Just like when I tell someone, obey the professor. If I tell someone, obey Omar, that's a different story. Okay? But if I tell someone, obey the professor, it means that there's a relationship between the obedience entails or is involved in the relationship between you and the professor you see <laughs> allah is ex extremely precise allah is extremely precise you know allah is the one who created the atom allah is the one who created the different isotopes you know i give this example one uranium isotope you cannot make a hand grenade out of another uranium isotope you can destroy an entire city Right. That is the creation of Allah. This divine revelation is the creation of Allah. Right. So we cannot we cannot dismiss this as as oh no no prophet messenger, you know Muhammad. It's all the same. No, it's not. It's not. And that's why if you notice that the obedience to the that's by the way how I concluded that Hud Lut and Chu'ayb and Salih are messengers because Allah refers to refer to them as messengers in the Quran when he used the word ta'ah. Let me ask you, Dr. Omar, uh, the, when you use the word obey as compared to follow, it's two different things. Is that correct? 
I excellent, very good, absolutely. A and I'll give you a, 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 I'll give you a proof that to follow is different to obey. Okay. Now we covered obey. Obey is to obey is obedience. You know, right. if I tell you do this here, you are far away in Washington D.C. or suburbs, whatever, and I tell you do this, then you follow what I told you. But if I tell you follow me, it's easy to 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 know that the connotation without going to, into much details, without going any validation from them, it's easy to to realize that oh, it's different, you know. Uh, I follow the footsteps of my father. But there's a difference between I follow the footsteps of my father versus I obey my father. Huge right. difference, you know. A different, right. uh, let's look at 20, now that you mentioned this, 2090, verse, Surah 20, verse 90. Uh, Harun, and Harun has declared to them, Min Qabl, from before, Ya qawm innama futintum bihi. Oh my people, you have been lured by by him. Wa inna rabbakum ar-Rahman. And your Lord is ar-Rahman. Okay, this is the key phrase. Next. Fattabiruni wa ati'u amri. Look. Attabiruni wa ati'u amri. That's that's the proof that ittiba is different from ta'a. Right. right. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and uh, it's, it, you know, th there's no, it's as simple as that. Ittiba is different from ta'a. Now, ittiba, ittiba, uh, ittiba could be uh, to follow someone, to, uh, I, like, I associate with you, I'm going on a trip, and you tell me, just follow me. Or it could be to follow your methodology, your system. Allah says in in, in, in Baqarah 2, 168, O yeah. oh, you people, mankind, humankind, eat from uh, what the earth has, Halalan tayyiban, if it's halal and tayyib, wala tattabiru khutwat shaitan, and don't follow the footsteps of shaitan. So it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be someone that you follow. Right. Um, so it, it, another one, yeah, so, so uh, another one is 12, 1238. And I followed Milla, the denomination of my forefathers, Ibrahim wa Ishaq wa Yaqub. Okay? So clearly that ittiba is different from ta'a. The two should not be confused uh, with, with the other. Uh, okay, so... Uh, and and another finally i want to say uh, the ittiba of a person okay as far as i my understanding of the word ittiba as it appeared in the muslim ittiba of a person whether a messenger a prophet or a common man okay because in the mushaf it also applied to non messengers or prophets uh implies that a human may be ittiba'd, okay? The human that, to be ittiba'd, if I may say, to be followed, must be a living being with a alive person. Mm. That's my conclusion, okay? Right. Ittiba', ittiba' cannot apply to a dead person. It's a very important point. Right. Yeah. So, and, and, and how do we arrive at that by, by looking at the Quran or the Mus'haf uh, itself? Okay. Now, in this context, there are few, there are two um, two verses that typically pop up uh, by those who really are still not satisfied. And the first one is four sixty five. Four sixty five. 
Allah says, فَوَلَا وَرَبُّ فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ by, the, by your Lord, they will not have Iman. حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجْرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتْ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا 465 And indeed, let me translate it by your Lord, they will never become mu'minun, having, i.e. having iman, until they ask you to become an arbitrator or a judge to resolve that which has emerged amongst them, which has emerged as a quarrel, fi ma shajra baynahum, okay? Emerged amongst them as at, or had been become a dispute among them, then they will find in themselves no hardship or difficulty from believing in your judgment and they will accept in acceptance. Now, the verse can be applicable only to those who were companions of the Prophet. Okay? Because, okay, uh, uh, or, or, or those who were contemporaries of the Messenger and does not apply to any two parties experiencing a conflict who have lived after the Prophet. It does not. Okay, assuming that this verse was universe, has, has universal applicability over time and space would require that the Prophet to have made decisions that addressed all aspects of human life. Everything that may come up, it means that the Prophet in 23 years, in that limited time and space and experience and technology and everything, it implies that he has come up or he has faced all kind of disputes that might come up between people, which is an absurdity. This assumption is absolutely absurd. Okay, so this verse is applicable to that time and to that space to the people around the prophet himself. It has no universal applicability. Okay. Now, uh, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll share this. I, I think that the specificity of this verse, uh, 465, to the Prophet's companions and community is supported by the fact that numerous Muslims clergy, tens of thousands, have issued millions of edicts on matters that were neither addressed in the Mus'haf nor considered as part of the Hadith corpus. See, none have consulted the Prophet, none of them have consulted the Prophet on matters that have never arisen during his lifetime. <laughs> In fact, a Shafi'i, the founder of the Usul al-Fiqh, which all Muslims, practically all Sunni Muslims follow, came up with new rules to come up with new injunctions, guess what, that have no connection to the Prophet. Mm. Zero. Okay. Hey, right. Dr. Umar, there is a verse before that, 464. Can you elaborate on that also? Uh, 464. Yeah. Right. And, and so, and whoever, any, any Rasul, any messenger that we send, we send him so that he will be obeyed by the permission. I, I'm loosely translating even, but it's it's a loose translation, by the the will or the permission of Allah. Okay. Okay. So so it 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 fits in the in the in the theme that we're talking about is that right. the ta'a. Right. Ta uh, you know, Allah is saying, my understanding is that we want you to obey the messenger. And obeying the messenger, it means that obeying him in the message, in his capacity, you know, uh, uh, in his role. The messenger is a role. And if you want later on, we can talk about the prophet and the messenger. Yeah, we're going to have but, some questions on that later on. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, but in, in relation to the verse that I just said, 465, there's another one, actually, 4, 4210. I like to bring this 4210 uh, because it really sheds some further light into this discussion. 
Allah says, وَمَا اخْتَلَفْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ شَيْءِ فَحُكْمُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ ذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبِّي عَلَيْهِ تَوَكَّلْتُ وَإِلَيْهِ أَنِيب On the assumption that this is what Muhammad, the messenger, is saying, and this is the translation, and in whatever thing you deferred about, look, right. وَمَا اخْتَلَفْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ شَيْءِ what you have differed on or differed about, then refer judgment on it to who? To Allah. To Allah. Very important. <laughs> Look, the first verse that I talked about before, فَمَا شَجْرَ بَيْنَكُمْ A yes. dispute. This is what you have differed about. Right. So, a case in point, if we differ on any point, any, let's say the stoning of of, of those who commit adultery and they're married. Okay, here's a case in point. Let's not keep things in a theoretical realm. Okay? Of course, stoning is, is a fabrication, is a barbaric right. uh, practice that has nothing to do with Islam. But if we were to say, let's say someone is, me and someone else are disputing whether it is part of Islam, Allah says, if you differed, because obviously there's a difference. Right? right? Mm -hmm. Then we return it to who? To Allah. To Allah. Right. How do we? How do I return it to Allah? I return it to Allah in the message. In the message. I cannot return it to anyone other than Allah, whether that person is Ibrahim or Muhammad or Sulaiman or Isa or Musa. Right. I cannot. All right. So, so that's as far as the the ta'a and ittiba. Okay. Now. The next that comes to one's mind is the concept of uswa, right? Yeah, yeah. uswa hasana, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uswa hasana, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, this is uh, typically used to buttress the, the concept that we need to obey Muhammad, right. obey the Prophet, obey the Messenger in whatever lot, they have. Right. A lot of people yeah. ask that question, right? So... And th this is a very important question. Uh, we start Uswa. Uswa appeared, Uswa Hasana appeared three times. Uswa could be Hasana and could be Sayyah. Could be a bad Uswa, could be a good Uswa. Appeared three times in the Mus'haf only. Okay. So let's try to understand what Allah is telling us about Uswa Hasana. So 3321 in the Mus'haf, 3321, Allah says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا. Okay. Loose translation. There was for you, for you, you is plural. لكم plural. In the messenger of of Allah. Look, in the messenger of Allah, not in the prophet of Allah. Right. In the messenger of Allah, an أسوة حسنة. Good example. This is to the best of my knowledge. Uswa Hasana is the best way to, to, to translate it is a good behavior, good example. For those who sought Allah and the latter and the last day and mentioned Allah plentifully and dhakr Allah Okay, so let, let's look at, uh, let's see what we can uh, learn from, from this, uh, from this uh, uh, verse. Okay. Uh, and and I think that, you know, you know, the, the, these are these are, are serious verses. I mean, we really need so to continue. Uh, Dr. It. Omar, in this verse, is it uh, addressing to the messenger or messengers? Or the Rasulullah, Rasulullah, the messenger of Allah. Messenger of Allah. But not, but not the prophet. No, messenger of Allah. Okay, now. Let, let's see what we can learn from this. First of all, uh, here, Uswa Hasana, which I, again, I translate as a good example, is commonly invoked as a holistic concept that encourages commands, okay? Uh, in, uh, sorry, that encourages or commands, uh, as some scholars would argue, that Muslims emulate the Prophet or the messenger. Of course, they don't differentiate between prophet and the messenger, but they focus on emulating the character of right. Muhammad without specifying the role, right? Uh, 
Right. This reminds me, by the way, before I go any further, uh, okay, I'll mention it, is that if I tell uh, my, I'm sorry, I'm using these examples because they're the closest to my heart. Uh, let's say there was a prominent uh, pro prominent uh, philosopher or a prominent scientist. I don't know, just an iconic figure. I hope people don't be offended. But if we take an iconic figure like Einstein, if I tell my students in, in Einstein, there is an uswa, in the scientist, Einstein, there is an uswa hasana for you. I could tell them, in Einstein, there's an uswa hasana for you. You see, Allah is teaching us proper language. Allah is teaching us precision. You know, if we dissect, if we try to understand matter, then we find that there are atoms. Atoms have components, right? Neutrons, protons, and so forth. That's Allah's creation. And the more we understand that, you know, Allah is telling us, if you want to understand, then you really need to pay attention to these details, right? Because the person who thinks that uh, the atom is just atom and there's nothing smaller, uh, that person will be, I think to use the words of the Mus'haf, atom means he will be retarded. He will be way behind those who know that there's much more to the atom, okay? So, uh, if, if I were to tell people in to my students in Einstein there's a, an uswa in Einstein there's an uswa hasana for you versus in the scientist Einstein there's an uswa hasana for you. The first one, you know, some people object to Einstein's character. I don't think he had an ideal character. Again, I'm not here to judge his character, whether he was, uh, you know, whatever. Okay. But uh, his character is, is, is a different matter. But his methodology, his methodology to do science is the uswa hasana that I'm referring to when I say that in Einstein, there's an uswa, in Einstein, the scientist, there's an uswa hasana for you. Or in uh, some doctor A. Okay, so what, what you're saying in this verse, when you're giving example of Einstein, for example, and also this verse, is not talking about specifically the character of the messenger. It's talking about the the message the and the work they have done. The role, exactly. The role, exactly. Like Einstein has done a good paper research. So you're talking about that establishing exactly. that. About the, 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 right. Exactly. The, the, the scientific character. The the research, right, yeah. Recently, just I came across a, a major engineer professor who died. He was a professor at the University of Michigan, and in his obituary, they talk about his his philosophy of 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 mentoring student, his academic work, and all of that. And they don't talk about his uh, whether he used to go to church, how he raised right. his kids. I mean, so so I think this he, is very important to understand. Very good yeah. point, Doctor. So. So here, Uswa Hasana, as, as I said, uh, uh, okay, so Allah could have produced different verses. I mean, sometimes it helps to, to play with words to, to try to understand something better. For instance, Allah could have said, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي نَبِيِّ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةً حَسَنًا You see? But he didn't. He's فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ so the distinction, okay, I think can be better. Uh, you know, I, I, I mentioned a few examples, but uh the 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 there are two there are two different possibilities here okay first of all let's focus on uh, the past tense okay uh lakum allah says there was in muhammad okay there was in muhammad do, do you see can lakum okay so mm -hmm. either Either I understand this as there was in Muhammad a good example for you and it is null and void because it was. It was. It, and, and this, I don't buy this theory. Why? Because when this was revealed, okay, be, because of the other validation that I will give soon, the Uswa Hasana has to be exemplified, has to be presented, has to be presented, 
okay? And yeah. I skipped that little piece of information when I talked about the example of Einstein. If I tell, if I tell someone, you have an uswa hasana in something, I have to be specific, okay? I have to be specific. Either I say that, I say the role that I'm referring to, the right. role, mm -hmm. or to be specific about what is the uswa hasana. And I'll, I'll show you that in a second, okay? So if, if it was in the past tense, when it was revealed, it was null and void. So, so if we look carefully at the Quran, the use of the past tense is not what we, I should say the Arabs, use the past tense. It's different. We have to pay careful attention yeah. to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so, so I believe, I believe that this did not refer to a past tense, but this referred to the people around the prophet who saw the example, right. who could emulate an example. Because, you know, for me, for me, I did not see the prophet. Right. I see, I did not see the prophet. And the only thing I see is what Allah chose to archive. The only, the only thing that I can say I believe in. I'm not going to wait for a hadith that will take 1400 years for someone to come and to authenticate for me, to, to tell me this is sahih. I can't, yeah. <laughs> you see. All right. So, uh so since the emphasis in 33 this verse 21 is on the messenger of allah the mushaf makes it clear that muhammad was not to be emulated i.e to be followed the uswa hasna in acts that were contrary to his command right so either way you want to look at past tense or present tense the emulation has to be in the messenger role number one and and the uswa hasana cannot be uh, the uswa hasana yeah cannot be outside of the message yeah. uh, the, uh, the, the, the cannot be vague okay yeah. cannot be vague so here's an example okay uh, to, to prove this to prove this point i looked at the other two verses in the mushaf which has uswa hasana and i think you you might find this interesting okay and this is the process of tartil. You know, this is how we can understand the Quran. We put things that are similar words together and right. then we can right. start understanding because, you know, the word has multiple meanings, okay? Different words have different meanings. But when you have a word and you uh, put a, an adjective, you qualify it, then you really confine the meaning. Like uswa hasana, whenever you have uswa hasana, it is most likely means the same in the Quran. Uswa, possibly it may mean something different, but uswa hasana, you have really tied the meaning further. Let's look at 64. 64. Uh, Allah says, What chapter is that, Dr. Roman? 60. Oh. Four, uh, uh, chapter 60, verse oh. four. Okay. okay. I, I will say the whole thing and I need, we need to concentrate this because it will, it's important. Okay. Let's translate this. There was for you an uswa hasana in Ibrahim and those people who were with him. See, uswa right. hasana appeared here. Right. There was for you an uswa hasana in Ibrahim and those people who were with him. Look at this. In, in that they said to their nation, we are disassociated from you and from what you worship. 
that is beneath and reproach of Allah, we have rejected you and animosity and hatred has surfaced between us forever unless you believe in Allah alone. Look at the word next. Accept what Ibrahim has expressed to his father that I will ask forgiveness for you. Accept. Look. So what is what is so powerful here? Allah says, Allah says, there was if if Allah says there was, first of all, Allah is not addressing the people Ibrahim. Let's let's go step by step. This Mus'haf was revealed for the people of Muhammad and afterwards, right? The people right. at the time Muhammad. So obviously it was not revealed for the people of Ibrahim. Okay, Ibrahim was long dead. He said there was for there was an Uswa Hasana fi Ibrahim ma'hu in Ibrahim and those people who were with him. And then Allah specifies precisely what that Uswa Hasana was. Look at the precision. If Allah says there was an Uswa Hasana lakum fi Ibrahim, what was the Uswa Hasana? Right. Where is it documented? Right? Mm -hmm. He cannot say that there was for you an Uswa Hasana and he stops. It doesn't make any sense to me. Where is the Uswa Hasana? So he documented it for me. Allah says exactly what the Uswa, the example to emulate as far as Ibrahim and those who were with him. And Allah spills it out. Look, We are uh, 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 disassociated from you. And what you worship away from Allah, aside from Allah. We don't believe in you. We, sorry, we have we have uh, rejected what you have. And so on and so on. And then Allah says, uh, except what Ibrahim has said that he will ask forgiveness for his father. In other words, that's ex excluded from the uswa. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and by the way, the, the last occurrence of uh, Uswa Hasana is again very close. It's the same context of Ibrahim. 66. Surah 60, verse 6. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِيهُمْ أُسْوَةً حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرُ وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّى فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ there was for you, plural, in them, an Uswa Hasana, a good example for those who sought Allah on the last day. This this 66 follows 64. 64, 65, and 66 are talking about Ibrahim and those who were with him. So as far as Uswa Hasana, this is uh, what we can learn. And so our conclusion is that the Uswa Hasana is, is, uh, has nothing to do with the obedience of uh, of the prophet okay now we're gonna go back to the same question i asked you about the prophets you know like what is the role what is the reason why some was some uh you know allah has chosen some some of them to be prophet as compared to just the messenger so okay. what is the role of the prophet you know yes. why is necessary for allah to assign a duty make them a prophet you know see see this is this is a topic that uh it, it appears as the when the clergy talk to, with the most most muslim clergy when they talk about it and you delve into the literature it seems like it's a done deal it's it's it, the answers are there for anyone who is interested in and the fact my research tells me the other way around completely the other way around it's a topic that that has not been covered in depth yet I'll share with you some of my thoughts. Some of my thought is that the, the classical cliche is that, okay, the classical cliche, when it, whenever this topic comes up, uh, first of all, the messenger is, is not well-defined, typically, at least not to my satisfaction. Second is that the prophet, the meaning of the prophet, I, I want to say Nabi, Nabi. I, I don't know what prophet yeah. means in English, <laughs> Nabi, yeah. but let's say Nabi, okay? Nabi, Rasul, Nabi, Rasul. Uh, Rasul has to do with Risala. Rasul has to do with Risala. Risala is a message. Arsala, he sent. 
Risala message. So Rasul is either from Arsala, Rasala, or Risala, a message that something to convey. Okay. Uh, the the uh, who are the Rasul? Who are the messengers? Uh, typically, we were told, at least I was told, that those who came up with scriptures. Uh, my simple look into the Mus'haf tells me that that's not convincing. Okay, that's not convincing. Mm -hmm. uh, as an example, what were the scripture has uh, has uh, has uh, the Rasul Nuh been given a scripture? Or the Prophet, let's say, or the Prophet Nuh been given a scripture. Everybody, at least as far as I know, will say no. What was his scripture? The only command that we are aware of is that Nuh was told, Nuh was told to Abdullah to worship Allah. That was the the first the the first prophet, as far as I know, in the Quran is Nuh. And the message was simple, Abdullah. That's it. There's nothing about uh, cheating, nothing about fornication, nothing about killing, nothing about cheating, you know, stealing, none. Abdullah. Uh, but in the context of Nuh, Allah says, there are Rusul. You see, let's look at 2537. وَقَوْمُ نُوحٍ and the nation of Nuh. الرسل, when they when they when they accused or when they did not accept when they accused the Rusul of lying or 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 incorrect information. I'm just loosely translating this. Okay? When they denied what the Rusul have brought them. Agraknahum Okay, we have flooded them. وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ آيَةً And we made them a sign for people. وَاعْتَدْنَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا And we have prepared for transgressors, ظَالِمِينَ A severe punishment. What is interesting to focus on, even if I did not translate the verse accurately, Allah says, وَقَوْمِ نُوحِ And the nation of Nuh لَمَّا كَذَّبُ الرُّسُلِ When they denied or objected or transgressed against a rusul hmm interesting i thought i thought qawm nuh had nuh isn't it <laughs> i thought qawm nuh they were sent nuh all of a sudden we hear we see in this verse that they have rusul okay so who were those rusul i don't know okay let's look at let's look at uh, uh, um uh, uh, just before I give another example, the cliche that we were told whenever this question comes up, as I said earlier, is that the messenger had a scripture, okay? And and what is the scripture of Shu'aib? What is the scripture of Lut? I mean, neither the Jews nor the Muslims nor the Christians say that Lut had a scripture. What is the scripture of Salih? But all of them were Rusul. How do I know? Well, I went to the Mus'haf. It says, Ta'at, Rasul, and it was in the context of Shu'aib, Nuh, uh, Lut, and Hud. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's something to. I, I think it's it's important. The other cliche that we were told is that every messenger, a uh, Nabi, a Nabi is someone who prophesies, and that's where the prophet came, someone who prophesies. Okay, but what about the Rasul? The Rasul tells you what's going to the scripture has in it uh, what is to come and what has happened in the past. And ba'u ma qablakum wa akhbar, you know, the, 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 the ghayb and ba'u al-ghayb. Al-ghayb, it was something that happened in the past that you cannot see and something that will happen in the future, right? So, so it's confusing. I mean, uh, and then we were told that Every messenger is a prophet, but not every prophet is a messenger. I mean, we, we jump to this logical construction as if it's going to solve our uh, problem. Okay. Uh, now, you know, first of all, if every prophet, 
if every messenger is a prophet, okay, why would Allah say in 1951, 1951, uh, I just want to focus on the phrase, وَكَانَ رَسُولًا نَبِيًّا Musa كَانَ رَسُولًا نَبِيًّا He was Rasul Nabiyan. Notice, not Rasulan Wanabiyan. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Rasulan Nabiyan. Nabiyan, if, if there's no wow, okay, it's an adjective. My understanding, I stand to be correct. If I tell you, Brother Sarfraz, the handsome. I cannot tell, say, Brother Sarfraz and the handsome. I mean, that's simple logic, right? It right. means that the handsome is an adjective. Right? If the handsome that's is right. an adjective. Right. So, so, so Allah, if, if every Rasul, if every Rasul is a, if every Rasul is a Nabi, why would Allah say he was Rasulan Nabiya? He could have said just Rasulan. Right. That's it. Okay. Uh, now, this is not the only one. Uh, 1954. Okay, again, Ismail. You know, what is the scripture that Ismail brought? Uh, we thought that Musa, Isa, and, and uh, uh, Muhammad were the three messengers that brought scriptures. What about the scripture of, uh, of, uh, of Ismail? I'm not aware of it. But Allah says he was a Rasula. You see? So, Rasul, uh, uh, Allah says in, uh, again, uh, uh, let's look at uh, another two verses, 1169. 1169, Allah says, Our Rasul, our messengers, brought good tidings to Ibrahim. Interesting. Our, yes, very interesting. Yes. Our our yes. messengers. Look. Very interesting. Yes. Uh, so 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 who who are these? Allah says in in eleven eleven eighty one. قالوا يا لوط إن رسل ربك O Lut, we are the messengers of your Lord. To the rest of the verse, I don't want to mention the rest of the verse. Okay. That's very interesting, Doctor Omar. I mean, I mean, the 1169. Absolutely. Uh, the so, messengers came to Abraham. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and, and, and Allah says in, in 2275, Allah selects Rusulan, messengers, from Malaika and from people. Okay, so 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 I, I'm not yet really. I cannot say that I know everything about this subject. I think we are really scratching the surface. Yeah. But what is important is is that the pro Allah the, the the my understanding is that messenger is a role. Someone has a role. Right. But Nabi, and and I found certain people have similar thinking when i started digging into this I, I thought i'm the only one but i'm so happy to find out that others have similar ideas is that nabi from naba i thought of it myself and i said wait a minute does that make sense naba not tanaba naba naba elevated rose something that is above the rest, Naba. Right. Okay. So the, my so far understanding is Naba, Nabi, is someone who achieved a status. It's a status. It's a, it's a, you can think of a degree. You see? Or maybe <laughs> a like, a, like higher security clearance or something. Uh, something yeah. like, or, or I can think it uh, in my field, you know, you go and get your doctorate, you have a degree, but you may not be hired as a professor. 
Right. So a professor, it's a role. You have to teach, you have to do this, you have to do A, B, C, D. You cannot just sit on a podium and, and you know, claim that you are something. A, a doctorate degree is a status. Okay, you achieve the level of, let's say, knowledge or something. Okay, but but you, you can sit at home and everybody will call you a doctor. But but to be called a professor, you have to be running, doing things and uh, working hard and, and doing all kinds of things. So I think that uh, uh, that is a key to start to, to, to look into some of the importance between the two. And, and, and now one can say that, wait a minute, this is a philosophical uh theological so i i like that in the west the academics love to to throw in this theolo theology so that we all shy away from from this i don't believe that this is theology uh, i think this has very very important implications because one interesting thing that i found out is that allah uses the plural nabiyin and guess what and uses the plural NBA. Right. What are they? Are they different? Most likely. Most likely. You see, in 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 the most important verse that we wanna that has strong implication, Allah says in uh, I don't remember the verse, but I should have written the number. I don't remember the number. Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadin min rijalikum. Very important verse. وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمْ النَّبِيِّينَ This is the one that refers to Muhammad being the seal of the right. Prophet. مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ Muhammad was not, was never a father of any of your men. Loose translation, allow yeah. me please. But he was the messenger of Allah and either the last or the seal. It means to me the same thing. The seal of Nabiyin. Allah didn't say he is the seal of the messengers. You see, this is typical. People know Muhammad Khatim al-Anbiya al mursaleen No, that's not true. That's wrong. Muhammad Khatim, according to the Mus'haf, Muhammad Khatim, ma kan Muhammad al-Aba ahadim min jal, walakin Rasulullah wa Khatim al-Nabiyin. So he was the seal of Nabiyin. That does not mean that he is the seal of the pro of the messengers. Now, does that mean that there could be messengers after Muhammad? I don't know. But you know what? If someone takes the message of the Quran to a remote island in Indonesia, can he be classified as a messenger? Number one, I don't know. Number two, does that mean when Allah we refers to those verses about Ibrahim and Lut? Does that mean Allah can send messengers for specific uh, purpose? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I cannot claim to know about these things what is not mentioned in the Mus'haf. But definitely Allah says that Muhammad Khatam al Nabiyin. And you see, uh, th this is very interesting. Uh, the the late um, Rashad Khalifa, who I came to know about, I, I regret that I came to know about him very late in in my life, uh, just about a year ago, uh, because I always dismissed anything I heard about him because they spread the information, those the, his you know enemies, that he claimed to be. A prophet. He never claimed to be a prophet. He never. I'm not here trying to, to, to have a talk about his defense, but what I'm saying is that it is very unfair to label people in these mischievous labels that will distract or discourage people from listening to him. And I'm, I'm one of those who feel victims to this propaganda about him, is that he, he claimed to be the last prophet. No, he didn't. You know, and I found out that he also looked into this verse, and I probably, I'm not sure, but probably he left open the door that there could be uh, uh, messengers be beyond or after the Prophet uh, Muhammad. 
the the question is we don't know we we have no idea and if if there is if 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 there is a proof it has to be within the mushaf itself okay it has to be right. a Sohaf. Yeah. nevertheless for now we can say that to claim that Muhammad Khatim al Anbiya wal Mursaleen is wrong on two counts. First of all, Allah said Khatim al Nabiyin, not Khatim al Anbiya. And second, Allah never said that he's Khatim al Mursaleen. Okay. Right. So, okay. Dr. So, Omar, I have uh, Hina has some questions. Let me bring her on board. Sure. Assalamu alaikum, sister. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Omar. You know, like, uh, as usual, I have some, you know, conclusive questions. You know, like the topic is, do we have to obey the Prophet? So related to this uh, topic, there is one ayah, uh, 480, mm -hmm. Surah Nisa. And can you highlight the points in there? Uh, uh, for uh, verse number 80? Yes. Yeah. Okay. It says, whoever obeys the messenger is obeying the God. Exactly. Man man yata Rasul fad ata Allah. Perfect. Woman tawalla fama arsana ka alayhim hafidan. Whoever obeys the messenger has obeyed Allah. Amazing. So, it's so powerful. Yeah, it's so powerful, words, but it is it is obeying the messenger. The messenger is what is the messenger? The one who brings the message. So we obey him in the message precisely. Yes. So we it's obey a... him in the messenger. But he didn't say woman yuta woman yuta an nabi, and he didn't say woman yuta Muhammad. Now, mm -hmm. now there are people who don't want to see that the atom has protons and has neutrons. I mean, mm -hmm. it's up to them. Okay. If mm -hmm. someone says no, the prophet is messenger, and this is that. That's a different story. You know, uh, the, 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 the messenger, the, every messenger, every, every, I think every prophet is a messenger, but not every messenger is a prophet. That's my own understanding. Okay. Yeah. So, you see, <laughs> so when Allah says, Rasul, he does not imply Atiur Nabi. Yes, that's, that's so clear, right? Very so, important. yeah, very important. So it means like following uh, messenger is like uh, following Allah. Precisely, and, and 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 following the messenger is following Allah, and yeah. Allah says. This ayat also says that. And and this is exactly what this verse says. It it says yeah. it very very explicitly. Yeah. In other words, because if I want to say, how do I follow Allah? Well, I follow Him in the message that He sent me. Yes, exactly. Right? It I can never be that. two different things. And one another, another very famous ayat, like 459, uh, it's like uh, it also has Ulul Amr. If you can, if you would like to discuss something about. Sure. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu atiru allaha wa atiru rasulia wa ulul amri minkum. Okay. And fa'in tanaza'atum fi shay' fardu'hu ila allahi wa rasul. Uh, uh, this is very nice. This this complements the two verses that we talked about. Allah says, Atirullah, Atirullah, there's a ta'a for Allah, and there's a ta'a for the Rasul, wa ulil amri minkum. So, ulil amr and the Rasul share the same ta'a, same, okay. the same obedience. Okay? فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرْدُوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ And if you have a quarrel on, on, on a matter, refer it refer it or go back to Allah and the messenger go back to Allah and the messenger what is interesting that the addition to what we talked about by bringing this uh, verse is that ulil amr the the ulil amr those who are in charge of the affairs the best way i can look at ulil amr is that those who are in charge of your affairs their obedience and the messenger has to coincide. Mm. Look, one ta, their obedience. And this confirms to me that this verse is temporal. This verse refers to the, the, the community of the prophet. This, okay. this verse. And after the prophet dies, we only 
defer things or refer to Allah because he is because he is dead we cannot re, we cannot go and ask if we have a dispute to someone who is not alive okay and the prophet did not address every potential dispute that may come in 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 millennia after he dies it's just inconceivable you know when 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 the when the when the tv came or the 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 tarbush as the turks used to call it came and the 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 question was is it haram or halal why didn't the clergy go to the prophet well he's dead how can they go to him okay so they they started cooking up a new religion from which they can decipher okay allah says in this case anything let's say let's say i i say that this issue of the hat is trivial it's not worth it but someone else know it's worth it Okay, of course, we have to respect people, you know, right? You know, the, the funny story when the faucet came in Egypt, they said, many ulama, many shuyukh, many clergy said it's haram. Haram, yeah. <laughs> they, they have the right to, by the way. Everyone has the right to ask these questions, right? I mean, we should not be dictatorial in our perspective to say like, how stupid you are. No. Allah says, refer to Allah. So we yeah. go to the mushaf. Okay, we go to the mushaf. Yeah. Where is the faucet? <laughs> There's no way, right? Yeah. It, 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 is it that simple, sister? Yeah, That's it's what? simple. It's simple. Exactly. Yeah, but, but, but you know, like, yeah, the it, people it have that, been innovative. It, it, it is, you know, the religion, it's like a, a beautiful, uh, you know, a water flowing in a beautiful river. Hmm. That's the religion. Of course it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very well said. Dr. Omar, yeah, we're talking about the hikmah, so... A lot of people ask the same question uh, with the Surah Al Imran uh, 3 164 and Surah Bakra 2 129. Uh, uh, 3 Yeah, let's look at that because they always saying that they argue that Prophet Muhammad has a role to teach, to make it clear to the people the Allah's revelation sure and also they have a question about for example the sahaba at that time at the time of the prophet you think they understand all the revelation like the way prophet understood or prophet has a role to actually explain to them and clarify to them all the verses revealed to, to sure. him you, so, you 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 you're touching upon uh, a subject which uh, uh, it's it's beautiful, wonderful. I would love to talk about it as much as your program allows, but my my fear is that it will uh, take much longer to convey the ideas. Not not because it's complex. No 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 no. <laughs> because it will take certain uh, 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 certain level of exposition to convey the point. But I can talk about it briefly, sure. and inshallah in the future. Uh, we can, uh, you see, uh, when Allah talks about, uh, because there are different concepts you just mentioned here, uh, just the, briefly is uh, Surah Al-Imran, number uh, 3, 164, right? Right. Okay. لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah has endowed the mu'minin. إِذْ بَعْتَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ He has sent uh, a, a, a messenger from within themselves, from them. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ يَتْلُوا uh, to, to recite uh, on them his verses وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ and to just loosely and to purify them وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ okay. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ uh, The reason I said uh, this might take further exposition because some of the concepts might be a bit harder to digest with few words of explanation from my part is that Allah is saying that he will teach them al-kitaba wal-hikmah. The, the, Sunni, the Sunni champions, the hadith the framers, immediately say the al-hikmah is the hadith. Right. Yeah. That is argument, but, right. Okay. So instead of, instead of refuting that, I don't see any connection between al-hikmah and al-hadith. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you see, Allah ba'tha fihum rasoolan minhum. من أنفسهم رسولا. He didn't say he sent Muhammad رسولا. 
Just a messenger. He sent a messenger. So he is teaching them, uh, you know, is teaching them something that has to do with a risala, with the message. Otherwise, he would say, Ba'ata Nabiyan, Ba'ata Muhammad. Okay? He, he sent a man uh, to teach them. That's number one. And number two, يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيَعْلِمْهُمْ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ This takes us, and, and that's why I said this may take a longer to expose this, because it, it, that's why, if you notice, I refer to uh, Al-Mushaf. I don't use the Qur'an that uh, often. I, I use it sometimes to not to alienate people about the concept that I'm trying to cover. Al-Mushaf. Al-Mushaf contains different uh, uh, components. You see, one of these components is al-hikmah. Al-hikmah has to do with ahkam, not wisdom. You cannot teach wisdom. <laughs> and, you know, people. Pe you know, people live until the age of eighty to develop wisdom. Wisdom is not to be taught. How can I teach you wisdom? I can sit down, sit you down. Do we teach wisdom in schools? You know, you know, we cannot teach wisdom. Okay. Here al-hikmah, and if you cross-reference it to other verses in the Mus'haf, hikmah is from hukum. Hikmah is from That's hukum. That's what I was going to say. Okay. Wisdom so, is, you know, the uh, uh, religion, religion is, uh, I wanted to say this earlier, the religion of Islam is not a philosophy. Allah is not a philosopher. Allah did not send philosophers. <laughs> so you're saying basically uh, the messenger job is to specifically... Uh, telling the people the order of the order of Allah. That's the order from Allah. Ayat, ayat, kitab, and hikmah. Exactly. Ayat, the signs, al-kitab. Al-kitab encompasses many things in the Mus'haf, qasas, the stories of the prophets and anbiya and so forth. Al-hikmah and ahkam, ahkam, the, the injunctions. Yu'allimuhum. These are things that can be taught, but to to teach wisdom, I, I, I really cannot comprehend that. How will you teach me wisdom? You know, how how in 23 years and and uh, even even not all of it were uniformly, you know, uh, so, uniform you know, as far as uh, yeah. for example, when we talk about the postman, postman come, you know, we talk about the postman, you know, postman bring the, the message and deliver it to you. So postman also come sometimes bring you the order from the judge this is the order and you post it that's what it is exactly the city here the like city. Gonna tell you well judge think like this here's a good that's why he made this judgment and hey, that's here's why a good like example that. you know a good example the city one time i was i did not cut my grass and the grass was 16 centimeter <laughs> and apparently it's 15 centimeter and the, the, the city sent me a, a notice you know it's right. the law Okay, right. so it, it sent me al hikmah, you know, <laughs> the hukum. All right. Exactly. Right. Uh, uh, you see, uh, anyways, I, I I I I don't want to forget something very important, and that is, in the same uh, the same vein, the the same theme, is another verse that is used heavily. Is the the verse is ma atakum al rasulu fakhuduh, right? Uh, uh, 59.7 59.7 okay. yeah 59.7 this is used heavily to indicate that whatever the prophet did whatever the prophet did okay and whatever the messenger did look both whatever the prophet did and whatever the messenger did, is used to indicate that we should do it okay mm -hmm. and why do I say I included the messenger here this is critical okay let me read it Allah says, ما أفاء الله على رسوله من أهل القرى فلله والرسول ولذي القربى واليتامى والمساكين وابن السبيل كي لا يكون دولة بين الأغنياء منكم وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا And that while Allah restored to his messenger from the people of the towns it is for Allah and for the messenger and for the القربى the close net and orphans and masakin and travelers, so that it will not be a perpetual distribution among the rich from among you, and ma atakum the messenger, then take it. Ma atakum al rasulu fa wa ma nahakum anhu fantahu. Typically, look, 
you know, it's interesting, sister. You know, typically this is plucked. You know, ما أتاكم رسوله فخدوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا. Just this phrase. Mm-hmm. Allah warns. Allah warns in the Quran. Do not pluck phrases out of verses. Allah warns. Yes. Okay. Yes. And mm-hmm. so if you look at this verse, I, I, when I started working on my book, I looked at this verse and I said, wait a minute. I mean, the context has nothing to do with anything except the war bounty. Right. Number one. Number two, it has nothing to do with me. Three, three, it is Ta'at al-Rasul that is separate from Ta'at Allah. Right. Do you see? Now, one, you would say, why is it Ta'at al-Rasul? Because the message is in this verse there's a message in this verse that came from allah do you see right so, yeah. so what the what, what allah what the messenger is saying here it did not come from his brain do you yeah, see right. yes. it did not it came from the message right. but it is something that has to do with the distribution of the war bounty yeah has nothing to do with me. And you know what I found out? I really cannot remember the name of the uh, 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 Mufassir. I don't know, Tabari al-Qurtubi. But only one of the Mufassirin, the classic traditional ones that I looked at, only one is saying what I'm telling you right now. So, so <laughs> now, now more and more people are realizing that this verse has to be looked in its context and the context is the war bounty now uh, i i want to uh, i you know now of course i believe that the prophet said many good things for sure of course he was a prophet in other words he has arisen for him to be chosen to deliver the message because allah says if you don't deliver the message I will torment you. He has reached a status, a level deserving of that amazing, amazing privilege. I mean, you know, people people expect you to say Salah ala nabi Of course, that means nothing. I can explain it later. Salah ala nabi is, mm. is a vacuous statement. But isn't it more important to say Muhammad Rasulullah? Well, which more important? To Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or Muhammad Rasulullah? Muhammad the messenger, the ambassador of Allah, the one who created the universe. Well, right. Imagine. So he reached that level. You know, just like, um, let's say, assuming that uh, the, the U.S. government is a good government, let's assume, and uh, and uh, they choose one of the best people to represent it at the U.N. They call, what do they call that woman? Miss, Mrs. Ambassador. Yes. Right? Mr. Ambassador, right? Right. Isn't that a huge privilege? Yes. Because you are representing the great nation of the U.S. You don't want any other title. By the way, most of uh, U.S. ambassadors have a doctorate degree. It pales to your status as an ambassador. What's a doc? You know how many people have doctorates? Right. How many people have served ambassadors to the uh, of the U.S. to the U.N.? A handful in the last 10 years or, you know. So that is a privilege, and we, we, we sometimes overlook these very, very important. So anyways, the Muhammad reached that level. Muhammad reached that great status. Okay? <laughs> and and, 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 and uh, anyways, the reason when I said that Muhammad was a very high level of a person, okay, he had what we call today wisdom, common sense, experience, patience, uh, if you look at his character, he, in Allah says, "La ala khuluqin abim." He didn't say you have good manners. No, no, no. He said you have great manners. Great manners. I mean, look at how his finesse, his patience, his this and that. Anyway, so the 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 message is the message is the divine revelation, sister. It's as simple as that. Allah Allah spilled out. In the divine revelation, there's everything that we need to know about the religion. Every single thing. Anything outside has nothing to do with the divine revelation. It's not that, you know, eating hamburger, is it good or bad? It's not in the divine revelation. It's not. 
Okay. Yeah. Does that mean that I don't pay attention to it? Yes, I need to pay attention to it because if I eat every day, my cholesterol will go up. Okay. But but the divine revelation, we're talking about the message. The message is complete. The message is in the book that Allah sent to us. Anything, especially especially controlling our life like slaves, you know, uh, to be the binary, to binarize everything, the binarification of life, everything halal or haram, is something that we have to reject completely. You know, we need to stick to hablullah. Allah says, stick to the robe of Allah. Okay, yeah. Allah didn't stick to the robe of anyone else. You know, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى The concept is that two wahis. You know, if, if yeah. in, in, a, in a future program, this is extremely important because, you know, they, they went after this, uh, this, this theory. They wanted to create a parallel religion. They wanted to, okay? Uh, and with this parallel religion, you know, until now, we're, we're still validating a hadith. Can you believe it? Until 1400 years after the Prophet did, according to the hadith framers, we're still validating and invalidating our religion. By the way, look at carefully what I'm saying. If hadith is religion, we're still validating and invalidating our religion. Dr. Omar, I think you had given a good example before about the, you know, when you go and you give their level is higher, for example, ambassador, they represent your country in the UN, for example. So my my opinion, like Allah has sent the prophets and the messenger and the prophet, obviously they have a higher level and Allah wants you to listen to them because they are giving you Allah's message and they are the, for example, chosen by Allah. And then they have, they're just simply conveying the message from Allah to all the humans. And that's why they have, they were chosen. That's why we can call them prophet. And that's why we have to listen to their message there. We don't have to follow them. It's only the message which was given by Allah to Absolutely. them. And Absolutely. we're not going to fall. For example, we know I'm not going to follow Mr. Ambassador, what Mr. Ambassador is doing after you, you the message know. was delivered. You know, you know, brother, well, you know, for those who are interested in, in politics, and I'm one of them, do you know that the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., they never deviate from the line of the State Department? Exactly. Never. They will be fired immediately right. out. You cannot go yes, there. This is the same and statement. Same statement. Exactly. The script comes from the source, from their God, the State Department. Right. You know, so... Uh, I mean, they're very good point. They cannot deviate. I mean, if you do that, you're gone. Yeah. You know, you can't work anymore, period. So it has to be the same statement. You know, whatever you were told to give to the audience, that's what you're going to tell them. You cannot say your own words, period. And that Absolutely. is your capacity. After that, I'm not going to follow follow you because you, oh, you made a, such a good comment. You know. I really like you and, you know. You know, again, you know? A, 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 a tangent subject is that uh, uh, the, the, the prophet uh, interpret, uh, interpret or, 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 or explain, explain the mushaf uh, through the sunnah. This is false. This is a false uh, claim. You know, Allah says it was explained. explained. Allah says exactly. we revealed a book and we in it we have explanation for it you know there's a difference look look brother there's a difference if you explain something to me you know i i can go to you let's say you know arabic and you read surah al-baqarah you understand i can i can ask you brother Sarfraz, what does this mean sure nothing wrong i mean you can ask right, me i right. can ask you i can ask sister right. Anna, we can ask someone else to explain to us what does this mean but i cannot add something, add something See, exactly. th there's a difference between adding for instance allah says iman billah wa kutubihi wa malaikatihi wa rusulihi wal yawm al akhir those are the things allah wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wal yawm al akhir okay now the hadith inserted wal qadar khairihi wa sharrih now is yeah. this tell me is this explanation or an addition addition you know what addition means in plain, simple language, forgery. Forgery, right. Yeah. And, and so, very beautiful ayat related to this 
uh, you're talking about is 599 you can also you know discuss this one i think this is the conclusion of like our uh, topic today yeah exactly yes. the only thing that the rasul the messenger has to do is to, to deliver is al balagh exactly and he, and he knows what and he knows what you did not deliver and what you're hiding exactly and and allah tells him allah tells him if you do not deliver then i will torment you yeah, you fire you see, allah told me. and you're by fired. the way that the, another interesting thing is that people say well uh, the prophet uh, or the messenger of course they confuse the two uh, interpreted the quran this is a false claim he never did by the way mm -hmm. He never there did. was no need of the you know, no you know what there's certain verses in the mushaf that don't need someone to interpret them hmm. don't eat the dead do you need a scientist to tell you that dead animal don't eat it okay so there was there are other verses that he never interpreted because you know what i mean most likely they asked him most likely they asked him and most likely he said i don't know and why do I say that? Because if he said, I know, they would have documented what he said, right? I mean, yeah, there's no very, document. very good point. <laughs> if you look at Tafsir, by the way, if you look at Tafsir, yeah. you don't find the prophet said this verse means A, B, C, D. None. Right. Uh, but is this a, is this a, something that i brought from my head no this is the reality this is a fact you know there are certain things in the mushaf there are certain things in the mushaf that don't belong to you don't belong to me don't even belong to the people around the prophet there are certain things in the mushaf that were revealed only to him yes, only. yes. i think and he yes. and he Cool. did not share it with anyone so so there are certain things look at look at the variance in the interpretations of this verse what is a kawthar oh was it something in heaven was it a river in heaven was it bounty was it this was it that you know what don't you think they <clears throat> asked the prophet what is it that allah has given you can you relax us relieve us tell us please we don't have any information about that. We don't have any information about that at all. There is some communication with the Prophet, I believe, to strengthen his heart. Exactly. And you know, I just looked at this ayat and the uh, 820, like Atiullah uh, Rasul, and after that, it's a continuation about like the uh, him while you hear the listening. Uh, Sami you know, exactly. continuously the context is, is still the same till the uh, 824, you know, but yeah. we don't pay attention like it's like the uh, Allah is talking of the people who don't listen to. And, exactly. And he yeah. said, do not, do not uh, m move on, leave him uh, and you are listening and you listening. are listening. Exactly. So it seems like in the 820, the emphasis is to listen to the Rasul because he was conveying Allah's message. So to- Exactly, and, and you know, sister, this is what we're doing, many of Muslims doing uh, right now. The message is there and we leave it and we say, no, 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 no. We're not capable of understanding the message. The Hadith explains yes. the message. And but, when the Hadith contradicts the message, well, it says it's explaining. You see, the Hadith adds, contradicts, all these problems and mm. that's why we have as as one of your speakers have said you know and i don't like to make these huge claims but but this fits in the concept of shirk you know mm. the concept of shirk when you associate someone else with allah's hukum yes yeah. but you you, yes exactly but here you know like uh, the reason why allah is saying like what you rasul makes sense like to make people listen to him you know, yeah, like and always, and, and notice that always ta'a is in the context of the messenger. Always. Yes. yes always. You're right. And if right. if and and if we don't want to appreciate the difference between calling, you know, the, uh, between 
the status of a wife and the status of a of a of a medical doctor you know th- there's there's a difference you know allah, allah is precise you know mm-hmm. allah is precise you know they they tell a nurse uh, follow the obey the doctor yeah I don't tell the nurse uh, obey you know they may say the name of the doctor but that's not precise yeah you know, it's so secret yeah, yeah the agreement is to follow the orders of someone who has a role the role not, not someone who has a name mm-hmm, exactly. very good point i think yeah. our uh, time is up for today's show yeah. dr umar thanks for joining us today and i My want pleasure. you to please again like we always ask if you have a message uh for our my, viewers my, my message is that you know <laughs> islam is a simple religion islam is a simple islam is for for everyone islam is a common denominator it, it has that common denominator to address uh, the scientist the beggar the carpenter the medical doctor the it, it needs it needs some clarity we need to focus on the divine revelation the divine revelation is hidden is guidance allah is telling us this is guidance and we leave it and we we go somewhere else it's it's sad it's sad it's it's really sad and that's why we are in a in a in a confusion by leaving the 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 divine revelation we have come to believe in contradictions we have we have divorced the concept of logic logic we we no longer as majority of muslims heed or pay attention to the fact that this brain is wired to accept logic wow is different from fi is different from uh, 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 an adjective is it different from name these are basic things and i think that if if we just put the effort and go back go back to hablullah the the robe of allah i think that uh, we we will have we we will have it will change our methodology in life it, it's not going to change the way you pray that's minor extremely that the the performance of the prayer is minor but the substance of the prayer is big the essence the performance of the prayer is minor but the substance of but that's not ibadah allah tells us to focus on ibadah and and i think there is a lot of liberation in this there is a lot of liberation and the biggest liberation is from those who have used religion for cheap cheap gains okay and we need to liberate ourselves from those Okay thank you doctor so much for your time thank you Dr. Rama my pleasure thank you very Our good message yeah my very pleasure. good thank message you so uh, thank you viewers viewers for joining us today this is the end of our show please take care of yourself your family your neighbors and again please ponder on Quran read and understand try to learn Quran every single day thank you assalam alaikum doctor assalam alaikum assalam alaikum